Hey parents, it's Mr. Jim here. This back to school season, give your kids the tools they need to have fun while they learn with Osmo. Osmo's reading adventure, Learn to Read Game is an interactive tool for kids five to seven that help them practice and develop reading fundamentals. Because it's never too early to fall in love with reading. Visit playosmo.com to check out the reading adventure new reader kit today. That's playosmo.com. Osmo, learning well played. Hey friends, I have something really exciting that I need your help with. What do you think of a Mr. Jim book? Like a real life Mr. Jim book. Yeah, turning our stories into books has been a dream of mine for a long time, and I think it's about time that we make it happen. But I really need your help. You see, we need as many people as possible to say, like, yes, I will support Mr. Jim having a book. And so, your parents, I need you to tell your parents right now to go to MrJimBooks.com And just to sign up saying that you support the idea of Mr. Jim having a book. That would be so amazing because if we get enough people to do this, then this book will actually become a real thing. But it only happens with your help. Go tell your parents that you have to go to MrJimBooks.com or click the link down in the show notes below so that you can make this book actually happen. That would be so awesome, and I cannot wait to share this book with you. And who's ready for a story? Well, I definitely am. Let's go! All right, Purple Ninjas, we we need a new plan. We have done so many lava machines. I think it's time for us to expand our power. Uh, who has an idea of what is something natural in the world that has lots of power? Well, boss, my toots have a lot of power. Dr. Stinky Breath couldn't help but laugh at a toot joke. <laughs> I love it. But I'm talking about more power, like, like a tornado. Do you think we could make our own tornadoes to, you know, destroy the world? I think that would be a fun one. Oh, yeah, boss. That would be a great idea. Uh, we'll get it set up in, uh, in our desert secret lab. Uh, get it going on this, uh, the later this afternoon. We'll do some tests. That's a great idea, boss. Well, thank you very much. Of course it's a good idea. I made it. So, I don't want this to be messed up. Go and make me the greatest tornado creator in the world. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cameron was at home shoveling his driveway. There had been a lot of snow that had fallen, and it was his job and his muscles that needed to get all that snow off of the driveway. (laughs) Sploosh. (laughs) Sploosh. All right. Almost done. (sighs) Cameron had been working really hard on shoveling his driveway. He was piling all the snow into one spot. And do you know what he was going to do with that giant pile of snow? Yes, build a fort, of course. Oh, I love building snow forts. That's something that I really miss doing. Now that we live in South Carolina, we don't get much snow. And Cameron, that's so lucky that he got dumped with a whole bunch of snow. Because as he's building this giant pile of snow, he can start excavating it and create one of the coolest snow forts in the city. It only took a few more scoops to clear out his whole driveway of all that white stuff. You see, it had snowed all night long and had dumped almost one foot of snow. That means almost all the way up to his knees as he was walking around. That's how deep the snow was. Whew, now that that's done, now the fun part. As he started digging with his hands into this big pile of snow, he was able to start the formation of his snow fort. This was going to be one of the best ones he's ever built because he never had this much snow to work with before. And so the more snow you have, the bigger the fort it can be. After about 15 minutes, he was able to crawl inside and start working on a window. That was pretty important to let some fresh air in 
and an emergency way out in case the snow caved in. That was always the coldest part. If the snow fell all over you and yikes, that would be very, very cold. And you always need an emergency way out. Cameron's eyes lit up when he heard that sound. It was hard to pull his walkie-talkie out of his pocket with all those gloves. And when you have all your snow gear on, it's kind (laughs) of hard to get your hands in your pockets. But he was finally able to pull the walkie-talkie out and press the button. Cameron, this is HQ. We need your help in the desert. There seems to be a new secret lab of Dr. Stinky Breaths, not only in the blimp, but they have something going on in the desert that uh, we're very concerned about. We need you to report to the desert as soon as possible to figure out what is going on. Over. The desert, said Cameron. Oh boy, that's going to be a little different from where I'm at right now as he was surrounded by mountains and mountains of snow. (laughs) He raced inside to change his clothes because he knew that he couldn't wear all this stuff to the desert or else he might sweat all of his hair out. After he changed his clothes and grabbed all his spy gear, he blasted off towards the desert. Oh, it's kind of cold. Blasting through the clouds with the jetpack. I guess I should have worn warmer clothes now and then changed when I got there. Cameron was right. He It was probably a little too early to change all of his clothes into shorts and uh, short sleeve shirts for the desert because he still had to fly there. And it was very cold along the way. What in the world is going on up there? Said Cameron. As he was flying through the air with his jetpack, he pulled out his binoculars, looked up far, far ahead. There was some kind of miniature tornado in the desert. That is strange. It looked kind of like a windstorm, but it was different. It had a little bit of a purple hue to it. That just, I don't know, it looked strange. As he flew closer, he landed down by a big pile of rocks and hid behind them to observe from a a distance. That is when he saw them. All right, guys, this is looking fantastic. Our test is running perfectly. I think it's ready to tell the boss that we're ready for phase two. Phase two? Whispered Cameron to himself. What in the world? Are they controlling that tornado thing? Oh, no. They're not going to try and, like, fill our world with tornadoes, are they? I have to figure out what phase two means. Cameron started crawling through the sand in the desert to get closer to where the purple ninjas were so that he could hear better. And finally, he was close enough. He stopped and hid behind some cactuses. Ouch! Oof! Those are sharp, said Cameron as he pulled out some needles out of his the palm of his hand. That's the last time that he's ever going to touch one of those. All right, boss. Uh, are you there? Shh. Yes, Purple Ninjas, I, of course, I am on the other side of Walkie Talkie. You can go on. Tell me, what is, the, how is the situation going? Is it working? Oh, yes, boss. It's working beautifully. You see, we've uh, started creating many little purple tornadoes just to test it to see if it's working. It works perfectly. So, we're ready for phase two. Oh, perfect. Uh, what exactly is phase two? I don't, I don't remember talking about the phase two. Oh, yeah. Well, phase two is when we make the tornadoes bigger, and then we start to strategically plant them around the world next to spy headquarters and stuff like that, if you know what I mean. Shh. <laughs> of course I know what you mean. Yes, phase two. I remember. I made phase two. I. It's all my idea. And, yes, Launch phase two for when the tornadoes take over the spy team's world. <laughs> oh no! What in the world is Cameron going to do to shut down these tornadoes before they not only take over and destroy the world, but destroy HQ for good? We'll have to wait and see what happens on the next episode of Kids Short Stories. Hey, great job. You listened all the way to the end, and now I need your help celebrating a birthday. This birthday kid's name starts with an E and ends with an R. Drum roll, please. 
Happy birthday, Eleanor! Eleanor is turning six years old. She loves riding her scooter, playing with her toys, and drawing. I love it, Eleanor. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that we got to celebrate your birthday on the show. I'm so glad that you're a part of the fam, and I hope this is the best birthday ever. Friends, remember I told you at the beginning of our episode today that we're trying to make Mr. Jim's first book well, yes. So make sure that you tell your parents to go to MrJimBooks.com just to say, yes, you would love to get a Mr. Jim book. And that's all you have to do. And if as many people as possible, if we get enough people supporting the book, then that book will actually happen. So this journey of making our first book, it starts with you. And I need your help. And thank you so much for being a big fan of the show. Well, friends, I will see you on our next adventure. Bye.